Over the weekend, anything big happened in Bangalore? No, kind of the same old, same old, huh? Routine. <laughs> Nothing big. Wow. Andy Dalton. Okay, all of you out there watching, listening, you got what you wanted. Andy Dalton's benched. I think it was a terrible decision on a cut for a couple big reasons. And I'm dying to hear what you all have to say, but let me first welcome you in, welcome you into the flying pig skin. I'm Tanya O'Rourke. I'm next to the Hall of Famer John Popovich. Hey, how you doing, everybody? Hey. And the almost Hall of Famer. Soon to be Hall of Fame. I just don't know which one yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> Philip Lee. So um, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, so Andy Dalton benched. And uh, Philip, you were in the locker room today. Give us a 411. What happened? We uh, we were. Bengals open locker room after practice this morning, and it was the... Uh, most uh, fired up I've seen Andy Dalton since he's been in Cincinnati. Really? Now he was at his locker, right? He, we gathered around his locker. I and, bet. Uh, you could tell he was not happy, and pretty much he said he was not happy. Okay, he, so he, what he said did he it say? Was, he told Zach Taylor that he didn't agree with what happened, and that he felt like he was not. That wasn't what was needed. But at the end of the day, the coach has the final say, and that's what happened. Okay, so so we can set the table properly. Let's go ahead and listen to what the coach had to say when he said decided that he was going to bench the second leading what th- thrower in Bengals history quarterback. I don't know yardage. Go when you're zero and eight um, <laughs> and you make a quarterback switch. People tend to look at the quarterback and say he was the problem, and that's the furthest thing from the truth. Um, he's done a lot of things to to keep us going here, and and he's invested a lot of. Um, time and effort and energy into getting us a win, and it hasn't happened. It's unfortunate because um, he's represented this franchise the right way over the last nine years, and and uh, he's been everything you would have asked in that regard. And so, um, again, not an easy day, not an easy conversation, but it was my decision, and we're going to start Ryan and move forward with it. It's, it's the bye week, and so now you get a chance. If you're going to make that decision, you give Ryan a little bit more time to, to grasp it and get ready for the next opponent. I don't think there's ever a good time. You know, again, we want to win the next eight games, and, and Andy would give us a chance to do that. But I just felt like now is the time. If you're going to do it, um, let's go ahead and make the switch and, and get behind Ryan and, and try to go in these next couple games. It's the only position, really, where, where there's a guy that's sitting on the bench, and you don't completely know what you have until you see it. And so that's where we're at right now. How in the world does changing the quarterback fix the offensive line? How in the world? Tell me, someone tell me that. First and foremost, how does that change anything? Yeah. It doesn't. I'm looking. You're at looking? It. I, I can't what, find it. Can't find a what dark it thing. does it is, is change the energy in the city that they're doing something. This I mean, is again, a move for the fans, That right? is exactly it. I mean, let's admit it. They've probably, they've shuffled that offensive line. You know, it looks like a, you know, it looks like that. It's like game. a patchwork quilt. Yeah, up exactly. They've, they've, they've changed the defensive line. They've worked the uh, defensive. Nobody notices that. Nobody cares about that. Uh, but. Every time a quarterback move is made, it's significant because, again, just like he says, everybody interprets that the problem is the quarterback. It's not. You know, he's part of the problem. Sure. But he's not the problem. How many, let me ask you guys, how many offensive linemen on um, our starting rotation, our starting um, line, are undrafted free agents? At least two? Oh, I think more than that. Yeah, I mean, okay. Uh, well, I said, what does an undrafted free agent mean? In in very sports sportsy terms, it means you weren't good enough to be drafted. Exactly. So exactly. Yep. that's what Andy Dalton has on the in front of him, protecting him. Oh, you're exactly right. I I, I, I don't think anybody's disagreeing. You. I mean, to look at Philip, you were shooting two weeks ago the ground level with Jacksonville, and mm-hmm. and to see how quickly. Those guys were on him sometimes. I mean, he barely took those two, three steps. Two steps, and they, they were on him real, real fast. Yeah. He, he had nowhere to throw, no time to look, scan the field, go from one one route to another route. It was like, boom. They were on him, and down he went. There was the interception on a screen pass they were trying to throw. Mm-hmm. A screen pass, you have to hold the guys at least for a split second to give the illusion that it's going to be a run or something right. else. 
they didn't hold at all. Yeah, they I mean, they came, all. and all he had to do is throw for his life, and, and a ball went right to a defensive <laughs> lineman. It is, yeah, it is. It's the crime of all this. But, again, I think they're, they're realizing we have, well, they must have at least four home games left or something like that. They have to get somebody in the stands right. and give people hope. You know, the Reds how, have done how this. How about make a trade? How about just, you know, get some players who are worthy of playing in the NFL on your team? I don't think you're going to get any at this time uh, unless you were trading an A.J. Green or an Andy Dalton for draft picks yeah. down the road. I just don't think any good team, any team is going to give up good players at this point uh, because they want those players, too. All the Bengals are going to get is a bunch of retreads at this point. Dalton mentioned this morning that... This occurred about three hours before the trade day deadline yesterday of 4 p.m. He says he and his agent talked, maybe trying to get something going in a short amount of time to get traded. You know, he said the time just wasn't there for anything to get done. Mm-hmm. So you think that was purposeful? I would, I would think so, yeah. I, it, I would think the timing of them saying, Andy, we're benching you with three hours before the deal. Yeah, I think it was probably purposeful. It could have been. Yeah. could have been. The other thing is, though, they were coming back from London. Those guys probably got back at, what, about 4, 5, 6 in the about morning? six o'clock. On heard, Monday yeah. morning. Mm-hmm. They didn't uh, meet on Monday. So it was Tuesday before they came back into the uh, into the uh, uh, ballpark there. So so how does this change the locker room? Because my my thinking is Ryan Finley, who may have a great future ahead of him, I haven't a clue. Neither do they. Is going to stand behind that same line, yeah. and he's going to get put on his butt over and over and over again. He's going to get intercepted. He's going to be scared because he's going to you know he's going to. This is really his first time playing in the NFL, and this is what he's playing with. I think you ruin this guy. You have, you run the chance of ruining this guy. So how does this change the locker room? Because I I can't I don't I think the locker room likes Andy. I think the one thing I'd worry about in a locker room is if somebody's thinking, Philip, are we giving up? Are we just saying, yeah, oh, 2019 is over. We're trying out. We're doing auditions at this point, and that there's uh, no hope in uh, and. and You know, everybody's still getting paid and everything like that. But just admit it, in your mind, you're still sticking to yourself. Okay, they're saying Andy's gone. We're not even trying to win these games. We're just trying to find out whether this guy is good enough for the future. Yeah. Well, we we talked to A.J. Green this morning as well and got his thoughts on Ryan Finley, the Andy Dalton situation. And we we asked, you know, how do you feel about working with Ryan Finley now? He goes, well, you know. He's a rookie. There's going to be a learning curve there that, you know, that Andy and I didn't have, you know, anymore because they knew each other so well, usually on the same page, or at least you were hoping they were on the same page. So he is targeting, A.J. Green is targeting on being back November 10th for the Baltimore game. Mm, He said that this morning. So... Looks like he is going to be on the field when Ryan Finley uh, starts I mean, a quarterback in that game. That is well. the first somebody's actually identified a date and a game he, to that, be back. That those were the words came right out of his mouth this morning. Well, and you got to think about you know Andy Dalton didn't have AJ Green out there to take some of the pressure off of him to take you know to take the ball and and catch it and run with it literally you know he just didn't have that. No, that's exactly right. Not only did he have a poor offensive line, but he had a depleted receiver core. And he had a because of that offensive line, he had a running game that doesn't work. Right. I mean, you, you throw everything at him. I mean, they they were it was it was against all odds. And if you look at the offense that they're running, the eight yard completion, the nine yard completion, that's all that they have time that Andy Dalton had time to complete. There was no shot at going downfield for that reason. Another reason you do not have A.J. Green to stretch the field a little right. bit. You know, on occasion you might get Tyler Boyd in a play like that. But there was that one link missing, yeah. and that was A.J. Green. So that that offense, they they were limited on what they could do for those various reasons. Well, and not just with A.J. I, I, I totally agree with you, but I think also because that offensive line had so much trouble holding people back. They had to assign tight ends, which you would hope would be part of the pass-catching offense. Right. They had to stay up front and block a lot. And I think you had to stay as elementary 
elemental, uh, as, 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 as simple as possible in your offense in order to make everything work. You couldn't be creative. You know, I mean, Zach Taylor came here as this creative mind. We haven't seen that since game one against yeah. Seattle, really. No. So uh, I guess I, I, I feel very clearly that it was too soon to pull Andy Dalton. I think it was. If you were going to pull him, you should have pulled him a while ago. And then, okay. but I, I you know, I, you know, he, the coach said it himself. This man has done nothing but serve his team and his city well. I think that I don't know why, but people have had in the fans have had it out for Andy Dalton from I don't know. I don't know why he's not an elite quarterback. He's not Tom Brady, but he's a perfectly serviceable quarterback. You have a really, really terrible offensive line. So um, do you like putting him on the bench. I mean, I'd like to see Ryan Finley play. I really do, but I just think it's not the cure for the disease. Well, it isn't. But I think by this time, if you know, if you follow the Bengals, you know it's not a playoff year. <laughs> so why not look at the future? Why not see? Because there are some really good college quarterbacks that they have to look at. They may have the number one pick in the draft or the number two well, pick. Have one or two. Yeah. And, and as a result, do we need to waste our time on a quarterback if we have Ryan Finley who could play? and Or can we go after somebody who is a top-notch offensive lineman and put him next year with Jonah Williams and a couple of other really good guys well, to, to, to bolster that offensive line? But then I guess, John, my, my thinking is then you had a trade deadline, right? You could have traded Andy Dalton for some picks because well, that- you need them. And if you're resigning the whole season— and you're, you know, you might say publicly that you're not, but if you internally are like, look, guys, it's a bad season. We need to get some really good guys in here next year. We need to trade. We need to really draft well. Let's put Ryan Finley in there. Whoever the third guy is is now the backup. Fine, and let's get something for Andy Dalton. Let's get something for him. What we don't know is whether they explored that and couldn't and, get something for him. Right, and and whether I mean I, I'll be honest with you, those one and two draft picks are pretty valuable, and I don't think anybody's going to give up uh, too much. Let me ask this question: Who would benefit in the what team in the NFL would benefit from getting Andy Dalton? The Steelers. Is there a team out there that he could have gone to and made a difference with eight games remaining left in this season? My guess is somebody looked at that, Philip, because if, if, if that agent started reaching out, you know, the, of course, the hot topic yesterday was the Bears. Mm-hmm. That uh, with Trubin- That's really about, oh, the, that's only team that I, that's about that. the only team that I ever heard mentioned that that might be a, an attractive trade for. Yeah. Now, you guys mentioned the Steelers. That makes sense, too. I mean, uh, you know, you know the teams. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, don't know. know. I'd have to, I'd have to uh, Scott Kaiser would be a better guy, and I wish he was with us because he studies all those well, things. Oh, he's like you know, parenting I, right another now thing or something. That, another thing that was hot on Twitter the last few days, I, I saw various reports on this, was Mike Brown, the story was Mike Brown feels like it's not his responsibility to make other NFL teams better. That's why he doesn't trade. Yeah, I saw that, too. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> no, I'm want, not. Oh, come on. You're making that up. No, I'm not. Yeah, and there I are stories that, that various NFL reporters wrote about that. And, and the one thing I wondered when I saw it was, was Mike Brown actually quoted as saying that? Well, or that is somebody I, that I didn't. turning that around and, and saying, yeah. this is what, um, you know, my, my belief is Mike Brown is going to do what he can to make his team better if he has a chance. Now, if, but, and I, if I think that unless he felt like he could get something for A.J. Green, which seems to be we've been talking about for two, three weeks, um, I don't know. But I, I think he respects A.J. too. And I think if he wants to stay here, he's going to let him stay here. But why would AJ want to stay here? I mean, honestly, let's just, I mean, because we're going to have to rebuild. I don't know. Yes, and it's not a one year rebuild. No. Right? And, you know. And you worry about him getting too old and right. getting hurt and never having played for a team that could really go in deep into the playoffs. AJ's one of those guys you'd like to see get a, get a ring yep. or a championship of some sort. I yeah. mean, he just is. Yeah. Um, and, and frankly, I'd like to see Andy Dalton I would get too. to a team and, and have some success. Those guys came in together, and they've been nothing but class for this organization. Yeah. They've been great for this city. Uh, and, and frankly, five straight playoff appearances, 
they did their part. They did. And uh, but the team didn't keep up with keeping good people around them. And uh, we can see it right now. And the biggest thing they failed at was that offensive line. And I still look at that draft when they did Abwehi and uh, Jake Fisher. Jake Fisher. Yep. Those were the two big studs that were supposed to come in. And they're uh, jumping off sides with somebody else right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, guys. You know, I wish the, I were back on a beach. The, the, Dalton talked this morning about, you know, he is going to do whatever he's asked to do in these, remain, he's that guy. in these remaining eight games because that's that's the kind of guy he is. And he wants to play somewhere next and, year. And he so. says whether it's here in Cincinnati or wherever it may be, he is going to go continue to do his job like he has always done. Good for so. him. That, and that's 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 who that's who Andy Dalton is. Considering yeah. how much he's been hit here in the last couple of years, I think he's very lucky to still be standing in pretty good shape. And uh, to me, if I would I would try to explore every opportunity to get out of town to get to somewhere where you feel like you can actually operate as a quarterback again. Let's admit it. When that offensive line was good and he had his receiving core together, that was a pretty snappy offense, and, mm-hmm. and he was. was able to operate it pretty well. He's, he wasn't. Then be he a broke Tom a Brady. finger. Yes. That's what happened, right? That's yeah. what that what happened. And it I wasn't th- his fault. Yeah, and I think he was what uh, he was uh, trying to make a play he was tackling a- someone. after somebody fumbled or something like that. Yes. And he was trying. Because he's a gamer, and I appreciate that. Yeah. So I, I, I would hope that he does entertain the thoughts, and uh, I don't know how much you can push as a player to get out. I think he has one year left on his contract. No. No guaranteed money after this year. Okay. Yeah, so they can. They can let him go. Say, see you. There's the door. Okay. Good. Well, and, you know. And they don't owe him anything. I've so. never felt this way about this team until now. But good. I hope he does find a, a, a team where they can, he can do well. And I, you know what? Good for him. For the next eight weeks, I'd just sit back, let my body rest, exercise, eat well, you know, stay in great shape so that, that this season didn't, like, he's been pummeled all season. He might as well take a break and keep himself in really good health so that he can go play for Chicago next year, whomever else. Yeah. Meanwhile, this team has to find that quarterback, though. None of these none of these teams are any good if they don't have a quarterback that they could lean on. I mean, you think about the Ken Anderson era, the Boomer Esiason era, and then this team just foundered along because they, they were going through the David Klinglers and the Donald Hollises and the Jeff uh, Blake and uh, you name it. Then they got Carson Palmer. Achilles Smith. <laughs> yeah. And then until Carson Palmer yeah. came along and really raised the level. Mm-hmm. You did. Uh, so, but, but you need somebody that you say, that's our guy. We're going to build around him because we feel like uh, he can make the throws. He could lead this team. <sighs> Whether that guy is Ryan Finley or whether that guy's in the draft. And everything that I'm saying here, I think you know, I look forward to seeing Ryan Finley. I hope he does well. I hope he doesn't get hurt. I hope he doesn't get damaged mentally or emotionally by what's about to occur to him over the next eight weeks. Do you think he survives eight weeks? That's the question. Will we see Andy Dalton back on the field? Because I think we this do. guy may not survive behind the offensive We don't know his fragility. Line. It's tough. I you remember know? one game against the Browns or against the Steelers where Chad Brown sacked Donald Hollis five times. He just kept pum, pum, pum. And and you thought, this guy's going to die out there. It was hard to watch. And that's in the days when they didn't you protect the quarterback. Right. You bet you yeah. could. right, where you could actually hit the quarterback. And you yeah. wondered after a time, if you know that's coming, you are going to be, you know, it's you're, like you're going to have the happy feet. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's no way you can avoid doing that. You know, he we talked to Finley this morning as well, and he talked about, you know, getting reps in a preseason game. Well, let me tell you, buddy, this isn't the preseason anymore. It's, uh, it's going to be night and day out there. I, you know, just, yeah, they're he, coming He's just got to understand that now. So hopefully he can take whatever he did learn in the preseason and, you know, We'll see how fast he can turn and run and get away from the defenders. I was watching <laughs> last, learn that. <laughs> I was yeah. watching last night. We had video from the Giants uh, exhibition mm-hmm. game, uh, and and he was quarterbacking and he was throwing a lot of snap passes. I mean, it was a couple steps fire, a couple steps fire. Mm-hmm. He's a big guy, and you know he's not a young guy. He's not a 22 year. He's like he's 25 20, almost. Almost 25, he I believe. He had six yeah. years in college. Yeah. Oh, he did? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's up there. Yeah. yeah. He What he did is he did, I think, uh, he redshirted. Then he had two years at Boise State. Then he came to, he went to North Carolina State. Uh-huh. Then he had two years and he got hurt. So he had like three years at each place. 
It's like some of those guys from Animal House. Well, you know, in some ways, I think that's kind of good because your body's had a, <laughs> had a chance to mature a little bit. And, you know, your mind is a little more mature, maybe. You're emotionally more stable. I don't know. The Bengals said at the beginning, what they really liked about him is he's accurate and he makes good decisions. Now, that might be that. Yeah, but when okay. you're when someone's in your face 10 times, yeah. you don't make such good, so many great decisions. Here, here, here's what I see that they need in, the, in this eight games to see what he does. They need someone back there who is mobile because clearly it's not, this line isn't made for a no. drop you can't back, sit in the pocket. Four, four step drop back in the pocket passer. So he's going to need to be mobile, throw on the run, do those kinds of things to try to loosen this offense up. Because if not, we're going to see him on the ground, just like we've seen Andy Dalton for eight <sighs> games. Yeah. Well, the good thing for him, if, if, if what you heard today holds true, he'll have AJ to throw to because we got a buy and then we be. have the Ravens. <sighs> you know, you you I, so, you, you, you just exhausted. had that sigh and I was looking at Zach Taylor the other day and we remember he was when he came in he was so he was so youthful. Yeah. He, you know, yeah. it's like a president. He's aged aged. just like yeah. a president oh, yeah. as an office. Have you and, noticed and, that? Yeah, poor guy. He's and such a nice man. We're gonna have to do a time lapse next year and just look at him and that. But I, I just could see his energy like man, I'm dealing with it every week and I'm sure it's tiring because those guys will sit and look at videotape and have meetings. I mean, it's far beyond what the players ever do. The coaches just, they burn the midnight oil on a regular basis. It's tough. Yeah, and it's ex exhausting. And I can't imagine. It's just like, you know, you're dealing with however many players, 50, how many are on the roster? 53. 53, 53. guys who invariably, you know, you're you're give, trying to keep them together, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And, and the coaches, everybody. I, I really do feel for him. And I feel for him having to have that conversation with someone because you know he respects Andy Dalton as a human yep. being. You know he respects him as a player. And, and I, I really like him. And I know he said it was his decision. Maybe ultimately they said, this is going to be your decision. But that was not his decision. But here's what we recommend. But here's what we strongly <laughs> recommend if you want to keep your job. Well, I don't I don't believe that, you know, Mike Brown makes the call down and say, put in a, a I I just think. He probably has to run it by Mike Brown, though, and and run it by. You don't think Mike Brown in their weekly, daily meetings, whatever they have, says we're zero and eight. You've changed everything else. Yeah. Well, he might. He might. I have to think though that uh, Katie Blackburn and maybe Troy and Duke Tobin also add in. You know the same thing. We're zero and eight. I, I think maybe their word is also as powerful as Mike's, and also they're saying, "Have you been to Kroger lately?" And listening what the people are saying about the Bengals. Do you think yeah. they have? I no. think they. Have. Oh, sure they well, did. According to CBS, <laughs> they're in Switzerland right now. So. <laughs> oh, they probably went there from London, right? <laughs> so. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, my guess is th this was done before oh, they yeah, ever the walked. Oh, the decision. And, and the way even Zach, I think, said it was done at, right after the game. I mean, maybe he didn't tell Andy till Tuesday morning, but it sounded like the decision was made right after Sunday's but game. But after that game, here's Dalton's stats from that game. 32 for 52. 329 yards, a touchdown, and no interceptions. Yeah. Who wouldn't take that? As an NFL quarterback. Sounds like a decent quarterback to me. What team wouldn't want that? Especially when you talk about the duress that he's under. Now, the, 50 oh, the 52 attempts, okay, it was a okay. little high. They but, have no choice, though. Well, but that's not his game. fault. That's, that's right. not his fault. That's right. It's not. I mean, it's just not his fault. You know what is the most shocking thing to me out of this whole deal? With the, or, that we are only halfway through this season. Right. Oh, oh, I know. And, we have, and we have eight more of these to go. Oh, my God. Yeah. We get a week <laughs> off, though. It's a bye, right? Right, Brian? We get a week off next week? Yay! I was I was interested yesterday. Keenan went into the locker room and talked to uh, some of the players, and one of them was Carlos Dunlap. And he says, you know, this has to be a wake-up call for everybody. No one is secure. No one is safe on this roster. If you could do that to the quarterback, you can move anybody over. But you know what? I thought about that later, and I'm thinking, oh, that's nice. But it's not like you call somebody up from AAA yeah. Yeah. Louisville. There's not someone yeah. breathing down your back. Yeah, if there were, we'd have I, a good I team. Think they, I think they've been doing that all season, moving people, yeah. moving parts around everywhere. None of it's worked. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, it's not, it's not like you can... Uh, Although the one thing is about football, let's admit it, you could dump out of that contract, and if Carlos Dunlap isn't doing his job, you're done at the end of the year, you don't have to worry about whatever's mm-hmm. still left on that contract because it's not guaranteed money not like, like you have in baseball. Yeah. yeah. So... So you, he better play. If, if, you, if you don't play well those next eight games, if you don't show that, you know, you still have it, they just say, you know, we, we found out about the real you at the end of 2019, and we're going to part ways. So we get a bye, and then we get the Ravens, and the Ryan Finley era will begin. Mm-hmm. All right. It's a tough way to start. Sure is. <laughs> what would it be? Probably... 30,000 there for that game that day. <laughs> if, if that. Yeah. Depending on the weather. If the weather's really good and people are giving away their seats and someone's like, yeah, sure, I'll go. Um, I, I admit I haven't been to a game this year. Yeah, it's, I'll tell you what, and that's that's the other thing is you guys have been around here. This It's just no fun when the teams are this bad. I have not it's seen not. apathy like this, though. I mean, you don't even hear people talking about the Bengals. I mean, you just, you no. don't see a flag. You don't see a jersey. It is like as if they don't exist. It's, I think it's worse than the 90s. I do they too. disappeared. Because it seemed like at that time people were just mad. Yes. Now they just don't care. Nope. They're just like, meh, don't care. Yeah. They don't. No, it's, I, it's a shame. I, I tend to agree with you. And it's it's only halfway there and they, they got to play out the string, but they got to find a way. I mean, I'm watching the World Series. And and it's so great yep. to see these cities just all fired up in these stadiums and even, frankly, watch a lot of football games. You see what kind of energy uh, that the teams come out with and the cities come out with. And then, oh, Cincinnati, you see those damn green seats. And, uh, <laughs> why you know. in the world? I've always wondered why they made them green. Go, go back a second to what you were talking about. Uh, folks, folks are relaying their displeasure through social media these days. Social media didn't exist in the 90s. It's true. When people were complaining and calling in on radio shows and That's true. this You're and right. that and the other sports of all hashtag. sorts on a Sunday night when no. they call, Popo, I think the Bengals stink, blah, blah, no. blah. Now they can hide behind their Twitter accounts, yep. complain all they want to, and that's that's how they are getting their, their yeah, but there's still not the, the visual team. cues. Like, you don't see flags hanging from houses. You don't no. see... I just... You know, you drive around town, and during football season, you've got f- flags on cars. You have people walking around in Bengals gear, Bengals hats. You oh, just yeah. see it. On Sunday, Kroger was my favorite place to go at game time because it was empty. Right. No? Nope. Packed. Packed, packed, packed. And it's like, oh, come on, man. Yeah. First quarter, I can miss a first quarter. Go get my groceries and get out. But not anymore. Yeah. It's really disturbing to me. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, you're right. I, rem- I remember I, when we lived in Delhi, and it was like the guys at the Amico, or it was not the Amico State. Maybe it was Ohio State. I don't know what it was. BP. But he said, there's no sense in me even be open from one to four. Because right? nobody comes in here. The Bengals were so hot, and everybody was home either watching them or they were down at the stadium. But... I think in the same way that social media will take people out of the stadium, it will drive people back in. If, Once but, there's a problem. But there's nothing else that matters other than winning. Because now that you have, you can watch a game on television, you know there's no blackout, you, you, you're in the comfort of your own home, you want to be there. And as long as they're losing... Why am I going to pay sixty dollars a ticket or something like that? And ten dollars for a beer. But ten. I know. <laughs> ten? I, don't, I don't know. Maybe twelve. I know this is that <laughs> when all of a sudden a team starts to win, people in this town like to be part of the action. They want to say, oh, yeah. "I was at that game Bandwagon Sunday afternoon," all the way. and they'll show up. But it's up to the Bengals to all of a sudden improve their product and say, "You, you got to be here." Winning will cure everything. Of course yep. it does. I, I was flipping through. You were talking about you were watching a World Series last night. I was flipping between the World Series and something on on one, on one of the ESPNs about how Bobby Bowden rebuilt the Florida State football program back in the late seventies and early eighties. Mm-hmm. There was no one going to those games. They started winning. They flocked to the Shot. stadium. They had to they expand started. the stadium. And Florida State football was put back on the map. Why? Because they won. Well, look at UC. 
You grew up here. Yep. You can remember when the I UC Bearcats UC. were not a hot item. Yeah. You know, uh, I, don't, I, I didn't go to one football game in I've college. told the story about going over there in around 90, 80, 81, and Mike Gottfried was the head coach, and I saw him afterwards, and he was he had like four or five footballs in his arms. And I says, Mike, what are you doing? He goes, I'm just collecting the footballs because if kids all run on the field and at the end of the game, if I don't take the footballs, they steal them and we won't have any for practice tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. And that's what that's what the state was. And there weren't that many people in the stands. Now, you know, it's great to turn on a UC game and see Nippert Stadium. Why? Because they're winning and there's a lot of energy there. I love that there. coach, by the way. Yeah, he How is. How long does he last here? Well, that's, he's he's been on the radar already for a couple of years. It's going to be very tough yeah. to keep him. Gosh, why? Why can't we just be a program where someone stays? But the nice part about it is, is I think there's not, there's places you used to say I'd go to. Maybe you say an Illinois or a Northwestern. Now you go, nah, you see's pretty good. Oh, I have good. to go to, you know, whoever blamed Brian Kelly for going to Notre Dame. Heck no. No one. Or Mark oh, D'Antonio for Michigan State. <laughs> Or Butch Jones to Tennessee. Those are really good jobs. Yeah. Okay, Tennessee. Tennessee yeah. Not as much anyway. Don't but, rub it Butch in. Butch might have wished he would have stayed right oh, here. <laughs> the way geez. that went down. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Sold in the womb. Just but poured winning, in there. Winning really does it. And, you know, everybody likes to be part of a winning atmosphere. It's just like FC Cincinnati. They were winning and that stuff. And, and they're still going to the games. I understand that. But if they have a losing product, you'll all of a sudden okay. see people drop off. I heard for the first time from an FC fan, like, well, I really did my tickets next year. But if they're still terrible, I'm not going mm -hmm. to that higher price at MLS. Sure. We have strayed away from being a Bengals podcast to just a Cincinnati <laughs> sports podcast. But I think you get the point, everyone. I think all of you feel the same way. I think you, most people wanted Andy Dalton benched two years ago. Well, here you go. He's benched. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. We shall see. We have two weeks to wait. I got to admit, I'm curious. I am. I'm curious. Uh, yeah, I, I could remember when they benched, I, I guess it was Klingler, and brought in Jeff Blake. <laughs> Shaken Blake. Shaken Blake. Shaken Blake. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a great story about he him started, sometime. He started through a, <laughs> a long touchdown pass against the Cowboys to Darnay Scott. And I'll tell you what, this town was fired up all of a sudden because they did they lost that game, but everybody believed they could win again. Right. And, and he put a lot of fire. Whether Ryan Finley could do that, we'll find out. I see it now. Sunday, November 10th. Dun, 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 Bengals, dun, 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 first dun, dun, possession. Dun, 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 dun. Finley drops back. Dun, 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 dun. 50 yards down the right hash <laughs> on sideline. Touchdown, A.J. Green. Ooh, yay! And, the and the jungle goes, goes wild. crazy. <laughs> oh, 25,000 of them. Yeah. I will say this. If that happens, I'll be in my kitchen or something, jumping up and down. Because I want to see my team win. And I do wish them all well. Exactly. And the next possession, Lamar Jackson oh, goes off. A, there you yeah. go. No, yeah. I mean, then, then they'll give up a touchdown in three seconds. Uh, and yeah. and that's how it happens. It'll quickly be 24-7. This town has <laughs> never been more fun than the two trips the Bengals made to the Super Bowl. Yeah. Never. I mean, it was electric uh, as, as those seasons developed. And I'd, I'd give anything to see that happen again here because especially for the young people. I'd like to see them experience that. I would, too, because I, I will tell you, as a child of the 90s, Bengals 90s, you know, I kind of missed the Super Bowl years. I mean, I knew they were happening, but I was just too young to care. But so I got the crap. You know, I got the crap year. So it was really cool when Marvin Lewis came in and all of a sudden we were a, a perennial playoff team. That was a big deal for me. But my kids have kind of grown up. With downtrodden parents like me, I would say their dad more than me because he's like, ah, the Bengals always stink. Even when they're good, they stink. They stink. They stink. Because that's how we grew up. Mm -hmm. And they just think the Bengals are always going to be terrible. And they might be. But I would like them to have a team to root for. As it is, I've lost them to another team a little bit already. You know, I just like, come on, you have to be Bengal fans. And they're like, do we? Do we? It's sort of like, to me, it's like, you, you're a Cincinnati kid. You got to root for your hometown. Yeah. But. And I worry about it, whether this, if this cycle continues for five, ten years, whether the Bengals will even be here. Oh, no, they'll be in Mexico. Yeah. I, I'll, I, I'll make, mark my words. They'll be in London. I was going to say, maybe they'll be the London no, Bengals. No, they won't. I think they'll go to Mexico. Because, well, the first expansion will be in London, right? 
Yeah, there's talk of that, but who knows? You know? I just don't get the logistics of it. What a oh, drag. It, it is. It is. Well, you've traveled. We, Philip and I went two years ago on that London trip. and we, I mean, if you're we, L.A. or San Diego, I mean, fine. If you're Cincinnati, it's a six-hour flight, but mm-hmm. L.A. or San Diego, that's... Well, you'd have to Long. do what, what, what the Rams did. They they played. Where did they play the week? Like Atlanta, New York Atlanta, or Atlanta. Atlanta. So I think they stayed, stayed on the west on the co- east, east coast, coast and then went to London. That's so. still that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Right, I think we've run this down. We- <laughs> have we run it into the ground? <laughs> we are out of information. <laughs> We're out of our minds. <laughs> All right. Uh, next time we talk, we'll be talking about the Ravens and Ryan Finley. But for now. It's the Flying Pigskin Podcast. Um, Tweet your thoughts to us at flying underscore pigskin on Twitter. We hope that you will um, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll see you again next time. Yes, sir. And who day? Who day? Who day? May day.